everyone, it's Megan from Tiny Orchard Quilts and today I'm doing a little bit of scrap management and I thought that I would share with you my process. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen that I am transitioning from my old system of sorting scraps, which was by color in baskets. And I had a basket for each color plus aqua and a white low volume and then a black gray basket. But this is kind of a mess because there is just everything in here. There's large pieces, there's little teeny pieces, and it's not stored in a way that makes it particularly usable. So I have been sorting all my scraps and then cutting them into basically pre-cut sizes. So I have a stack of layer cakes, a stack of charm squares, and then um, a pile of strings, and then all the little leftover bits, all the little teeny pieces that I'll use for crumb quilting or maybe I'll just throw them all away. I don't know. Um, so let's... Um, Let's get started because I've kind of streamlined this process and I'm working through it pretty quickly. So I thought I'd share with you some tips. So these are the piles that I sort into and there are kind of the finished piles over here. And these are finished usable strings, any charm squares that may have been thrown in the basket. And then I'll also have a pile for any layer cake squares that uh, got thrown in the basket. And then these three piles are the piles that need to be cut down to size. So these are pieces that are too wide to be a string, but not wide enough to cut a charm square out of. So I'll probably end up cutting these in half to make more strings. This pile is scraps that are wider than 10 inches. So I'll be cutting layer cake squares and then other things out of them. I might get some more charm squares. I might just cut it all into strings. We'll have to see. This pile here is all of the pieces that will be cut into charm squares and strings and whatever else. But those are the three main cutting piles. So when I take a scrap out, I kind of lay it out and look at it. And if it is wider than 10 inches, it goes into the layer cake square. And then this is kind of, I'll leave this in the little teeny piece pile. Ugh, why did I even say that? It's like an inch throwing that away. Here's another piece that I'll cut in half to make more strings. Okay. Here's a piece that is not 10 inches wide, but it's wide enough to cut charm square out of. Okay, so I have sorted all of my purple scraps into the six piles, and then I went ahead and pressed the finished piles. So these are the charm squares I found in the basket. I found a couple layer, layer cake squares, and then these are all the strips that are kind of ready to use. And that leaves me with these three piles. Now, this one is the easiest to deal with because these all need to just be cut into thinner strings. So I'm going to go press these and line them up and slice them. Okay, so as I pressed these, I made sure they all lined up on one edge. So you can see this edge is quite thick. All the fabrics are touching this bottom edge. Whereas this edge, there's only a couple that are the widest ones that are on this edge. So we're gonna clean up this edge and then we're gonna cut from this edge. So we get the largest number of strips that are these kind of prime cuts. Now I cut a lot of layers at once. You can certainly do fewer if you prefer that, but I use a big 60 millimeter blade and I change it often. Okay. So now I kind of default to two and a half inch strips. So I'm just lining up that line there. And now I can 
cut back this way. Okay, now that is a big stack of strips to go into the finished pile. And now we have all these little leftovers, which I kind of thumb through and see if any are too thin to keep. Here's another one that's a little skimpy. Yeah. And then I kind of stack up the leftovers on the pile. And that's that whole pile of strings that's done with just a little bit of waste. So the next pile is the charm square pile. And this I'll probably do in two chunks. So I'm gonna press this in the same way as I did the strings, except instead of an edge, I'm gonna use a corner. So what I mean by that is, so I'm gonna press this piece and then I'm gonna take my next piece and I'm gonna align everything so that a charm square is gonna come out of this bottom right corner. Okay, so we're back. I've pressed a few layers and you can see that kind of all of the prime real estate of the fabric is in this lower right corner. So that's where I'm gonna cut my charm squares. Now, some of them stick out a little bit further because they have a selvage that I'm gonna trim off, so. Let's just do that really quickly. And I do use the reference lines on my mat to help keep things nice and square. Okay, so there's our selvages. And now we're gonna take a five inch slice from this side. I always count because I've cut more than a few four inch slices. Okay. So now we have a slice that has all the fabric on one edge and only a few on this side. So let's shift this out of the way and cut our first charm square. And I just kind of line it up so that um, I can see if there is any variation on the, the layers here that they're all crossing a line. It doesn't matter which one. And then I can straighten up to that line and then take another five inch cut. Okay, so there's our Scrappy charm squares, ready to add to our charm square pile. And now you have these little leftover pieces. Now, none of them are big enough to be a charm square on their own. So, so the really small ones I just throw away. There's a few more little tiny ones. And then these little pieces go back into the basket. Okay, now you have the rest of this stack of charm square sized coating pieces. Now this obviously is too small, so we'll throw that out. Now there's a couple of routes you can go with the rest of the stack. You can cut another charm square slice, or you can cut this into strips this way, the same way we did before when we were just cutting the strip pile. I really enjoy using strips, so I'm gonna cut these into strips because that's what I prefer. But you could get a lot more charm squares out of this if that's kind of your pre-cut size of choice. So I'm gonna turn mine, and I guess we'll turn it this way. So I have the nice clean edge on the side. And I'm gonna cut Mostly two and a half inch strips, but I like a little bit of variation in my strip quilts, so I'll mix it up.
There's some two inch strips. And I just kind of check these to make sure there aren't any little teeny tiny strips like this. We don't need that. But these are all decently sized strips. Now you could clean off the other edge if you like, but I don't bother. Okay. Okay, I'm done with all the charm square pieces. And now I just have this pile of um, larger size pieces to do the same thing, but with layer cake squares. So time to press and cut. All right, here we are. This is the last stack. So prime real estate is here and all of my corners are aligned to this lower right again. Um, there are a couple little, this isn't a selvage, but I wanted to cut off that pinked edge. So I left that hang out a little bit more. So let's align it. Now I generate more scraps than I think a lot of people because I'm pretty brutal about what goes in the scrap bin. Uh, if it is smaller than a fat quarter, then I consider it a scrap. So I have a lot of large pieces in here and you may not have pieces that are big enough to get a layer cake out of. And that's okay, they're your scraps. As long as you can cut pieces that are usable to you, then I think this is a great system. Uh, likewise, if you enjoy using scraps for um, like paper piecing the little hexagons, then maybe you should cut two and a half inch squares. Um, I already have a stack of those, so I'm not cutting any more, but you can cut any size that is useful to you. Like if you use a lot of three and a half inch squares, and go for it. Um, this was the 10 inch slice, so this will be my layer cake right here. Now I'm gonna um, cut these into, you know, I might cut um, a charm square since I have quite a lot of this. Five. Okay, and then this, I guess I'll just cut these little leftovers into some strips. Okay, let's get rid of the little tiny bits that are trash and add these to the strip pile over here to get them out of the way. And that's a selvage. I'll throw that away. Okay, let's deal with this layer cake square first. So we're going to align one cut edge. That didn't there we go. One cut edge to align on the mat and trim them all even. Okay, there's a pile of layer cake squares. And see, even though some of these were quite small, um, this, see that I only have a few leftovers of some of these, but because they were all referenced to that one corner, I can cut them all to the same size, even though I can't see them, which it really speeds up the process of cutting when you can stack them all. And then we just have this little charm square slice that we cut. So we can um, Okay. 
So now that all the cutting is done, this is what we're left with. I have a pretty decent size pile of charm squares that I can combine with all of the other scrappy charm squares that I've cut. I have a pile of purple ready to use strings and a pile of purple layer cake squares that can join my other rainbow layer cake squares. And then my scrap basket is reduced to this. Little tiny pieces that I can use for whatever. So, uh, what do you think? Um, I have two more baskets to go, but um, are you gonna cut up all your scraps? It's, it's very satisfying, I have to say. And it has really kind of motivated me to finally make some of the rainbow scrappy quilts that I have been dreaming about. So, thanks for watching.